Vice President of Big Idea Entertainment and co-creator of Veggie Tales and the voice of Larry the Cucumber, Mr. Mike Naraki. Give him a hand. He's going to get situated, Dave will finish the news, and we'll start right off, okay? Sound good? Having fun? Joining us live here uh, is Mike Naraki, the Executive Vice President of Big Idea Entertainment, co-creator of VeggieTales. And for our live audience, why don't you give him a round of applause and welcome him here. Thank you very much. Thank you. But of course, you're not new to the Chicagoland area. You've been here many, 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 many times and years. Oh, absolutely. I moved here to go to college, wow, back in 86. Yeah. And I lived here for 17 years before moving down to Nashville in 2004. So I, Chicago definitely still feels like home. Yeah, except you don't probably want to move back from Nashville at this point, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time I come back in the summer to see a Cubs game, <laughs> I miss it more than coming back in the winter. That's so sure. Are you a Cubs fan? Absolutely, yeah. How about that Ron Santo news uh, this morning? Did you hear that? No, I didn't. Yeah, Mr. Mitchell, do you want to tell him what the deal is? Ron Santo, via the Veterans Committee, finally making it to the Hall of Fame. And I think he was on the ballot for like 10 years or yeah. so. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, so uh, we're uh, thrilled that uh, Ron uh, finally got the recognition that many Cubs fans believe were due him for a long time. Good oh, absolutely. Pretend. And even yeah. a few White Sox fans. Yeah, that's right, like you, for example. So, <laughs> All right, so Mike, uh, but where's your home then? Where were you uh, born and raised? Well, I grew up uh, as a military kid, my dad in the Air Force, uh -huh. and so I was born in, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base outside of Dayton, Ohio, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, moved to Japan, actually, when I was less than a year old, and uh, lived there for four years, Southern California, Colorado, Washington, D.C., back to Colorado, uh, up to Minneapolis, and then Chicago. It's <laughs> so a life it's of a military joy. family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My wife was raised in one of those as well, Air Force family as well, father okay. a chaplain. Okay. So uh, she did the same kind of things and probably been to some of the uh, same places, although she did have the excitement of living in Duluth, Minnesota for a while. When All you right. Said Minnesota. I don't know if you were in Duluth. But, well, uh, we are friends of Duluth with Veggie Tales because that's where Larry lost his tooth. Oh, I yes. see. So yes. that's right. It rhymes in a song somewhere along the line. Right. Well, we're going to find out more about this uh, latest uh, Veggie Tales uh, production uh, that uh, has something to do with the little drummer boy. And we're going to continue our conversation with Mike coming up here in just a few minutes, and I hope you friends can uh, stick around with us. We have a version of uh, Larry Mike Naraki with us, uh, the Executive Vice President of uh, Big Idea Entertainment, and uh, thanks uh, for making time for us today. Did, was this a special trip up to Chicago just for us, or are you doing other things here? Oh, no, this is just for you guys. I, I love it. I mean, I really appreciate the invitation, and I was really excited to be able to come. We were talking about this last summer, and it was kind of on the drawing table, and hey, that would be a kind of a fun thing to do in December. And we chose to December specifically because uh, you got a new product that's out from Big Idea. Tell us about this. Oh, yeah. Well, it's uh, The Little Drummer Boy. We've done a, a veggie remake on the uh, Christmas classic from uh, the late 60s, yeah. um, the old Rankin-Bass animation, uh, which tells the story of Aaron, uh, the little drummer boy, uh, who loses his family, loses everything but the little animals that he uh, you know, walks around the desert with, um, and ends up... Uh, experiencing Jesus at the manger in Bethlehem. And uh, so it's just a, a, a sweet story, and we wanted to do a, you know, kind of our, our veggie take on it, but really concentrate on a lesson of forgiveness, which is ultimately, um, you know, I think what, what Christmas is about and, and, and God and, and Jesus coming to earth for us ultimately to, yeah. for, to forgive us. Well, I have to tell you, we, uh, we have purchased a van. Now, uh, we're grandparents, so why would we need a van? And that's because we have four grandkids in the area, yeah. and we have to take them places. And no grandparent is, gets any respect if you have a van that doesn't have a DVD player in these days. <laughs> you don't have street cred without a DVD player. Right, because, because the parents have one. Yeah, yeah, And therefore yeah. they get into your car. You yeah, know, the six, right. seven-year-olds, you know, they, you got to have the same thing. So, that's right. So we have VeggieTales DVDs that we play for them yes. uh, in, the, in the car. Okay. So my wife... So, so you've heard a lot, and, all, but haven't seen many. That is correct. There you go. I, I'm in the same boat. That's right. But, but here's the weird part. My <laughs> wife and I are up front laughing at things, uh -huh. but the kids aren't laughing at them. So it begs the question, <laughs> <laughs> who are VeggieTales? videos really for? Are they for adults or are they for kids? Oh, we like to think they're for both. And, uh, you know, we have so much fun making them. You know, our, our point with the, our, our hope with the shows is to have a lesson that really uh, captures kids' attentions, captures their heart, uh, where a four-year-old can walk away from a VeggieTales video and say, this is what I learned about forgiveness or about uh -huh. thankfulness. Uh, but, you know, that a parent can really enjoy watching with their child and, and having fun with and, you know, making it a family experience. How so many children do. do you have? 
Uh, my wife Lisa and I have two kids. We yeah. have a 13-year-old daughter and a 10-year-old son. Okay. Do either of them watch any of your new productions? Are they still interested in what you do? They do. They get to do voices every once in a while, so uh -huh. that keeps them interested. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good move on your part, <laughs> uh, right. their dad. Uh -huh. Okay. How many videos in all have, uh, have uh, VeggieTales done? You know, I believe we've done now about 45 wow. uh, original uh, direct-to-DVD, to and we've done a number of comp compilations over the years, too, but I think just in terms of, you know, original... Uh, shows about 45. Is it weird to have people singing uh, silly songs uh, when you're someplace and you hear this and you kind of go, oh my goodness. Oh, you know, it just, it still feels a little unreal to me to know that, you know, because, you know, we're in our animation studio. It's not like, you know, we're, we're live performers where we go out and we see the interaction with right. you know, the audience all the time. Right. You know, we're in our studios, you know, uh, creating the songs, the stories, and then they kind of go out there. Um, so to experience people that, you know, VeggieTales has touched and they really enjoy the shows and they're singing the songs, um, you know, it's just, it, it's just really neat to see that. And I'm really, really thrilled and humbled by it. Mm. Tell me what your work day looks like. I mean, you're, you know, you kind of have kind of a weird life, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if, you know, of course I do the, the voice of Larry the Cucumber, you know, so I'm in the <laughs> studio sometimes. So, Hello, everybody. <laughs> Here's Larry. Um, uh, but in the course of an animated show, recording, recording the audio track is of very little time. You mm -hmm. know, it takes us probably about six months to create a show. Uh, and about two days to record uh, the vocals for it. Uh -huh. uh, so the rest of my time, I do a lot of writing, uh, a lot of directing of the shows. Um, we do all of our script development, story development, um, and music uh, development uh, in-house. Uh, and then we work with the studio, an animation studio out of New Zealand. Um, so I spend a lot of time on Skype, actually, with New Zealand, uh, you know, talking through shots and animation and, you know, as they're, as they're doing the production down there. Well, let me get a little more specific. I mean, what time do you get up and what time do you, do you go into an office? Do you work an eight-hour day? I mean, what, what's this like? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You show up at the office at nine and, you know, try to, try to leave as close to five as possible. Okay. Um, it's really, you know, in terms of the entertainment business, it's, it's a wonderful schedule. There are times when, uh, you know, on, on tight deadlines, you know, there's late nights and, you know, we have to kind of, you know, just put in a lot of hours. Uh, but, you know, we've been doing the show for 18 years now, so we've gotten the schedules down pretty, pretty great. And we've got, you know, just wonderful producers uh, that we work with as well that, that really keep us on track. And do you work, I mean, all year long or do you take a seasonal break or? And typically, no. We, we go around all year. We uh, do three video releases a year. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, I direct with another, uh, another director, actually, Brian Roberts, who directed this episode. Okay. Um, so he and I uh, swap directorial duties. Um, and, you know, so that gives us both the opportunity to take, you know, take our vacation time off and, you know, everything just keeps running. Yeah, okay, so when, when you get to work every day, do, do, is there a creative session that people meet with? Or, I mean, when, when do you develop the creative side of what this is? Well, yeah, you know, I work with a, uh, uh, our, our creative development team. There's a few of us in the office. Um, and just depending on our schedules, um, you know, we'll, we'll typically meet. It's, it's not an everyday meeting, but probably twice a week <laughs> we meet on creative development uh, where we just toss out a lot of story ideas um, and, you know, sort of refine and, and boil those down and then work together with our marketing department to see, okay, you know, what are, what are our fans asking for? What would they want to see? Um, and, you know, just... just you kind of come up with ideas like that. Have you ever wondered how long the VeggieTales franchise can keep going? Wow, you know, I'm just, we're, we're at 18 years now. We're beginning our preparation uh, for our 20 year anniversary wow. um, in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just, it's just been amazing to be, to be a part of it for this, for this many years. You know, I, I look at uh, franchises like Sesame Street, which I grew up on, and just say, wow, you know, look, look how long that's endured. And I meet kids now who, are children of parents who were children uh, when VeggieTales first came out, you know, uh -huh. and, and they're watching the new shows. Some, some of the kids I meet, you know, haven't seen the old shows, which is, you know, pretty incredible to me. Yeah. Um, but just to know that they're seeing the new stuff and they love it and, you know, Bob and Larry are a part of their lives. Um, you know, as long as, you know, God would have us keep making shows, I, you know, I want to, I would love to keep doing it. Well, there are stuffed animals. I assume you have stuffed vegetables of Bob and Larry as well, <laughs> correct? Yeah. That's right. Sounds like a Polish dish. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is kind of strange to think my kid's going to bed with a cucumber, but uh, there you go. So. Yeah, we have the, the plush Bob and Larry and, and all of that. <laughs> and just, you know, I think kids for, for us, you know, it, with, with telling stories, story has such a powerful impact on right. kids' lives, and, you know, we've wanted to create characters that, 
you know, uh, that, that teach kids there's a God who loves them, who made them special, um, and, and, you know, we feel like if, if kids can relate to that, can relate to that worldview, that it's going to really, really enrich their lives. If you're just uh, joining us, good morning to you. Mike Naraki is our guest. Mike is the executive vice president of Big Idea Entertainment, co-creator of Veggie Tales, and uh, they have a brand new DVD that has just uh, come out a couple of weeks ago, and it's called uh, The Little Drummer Boy, mm -hmm. and uh, your kids uh, would love this, and it would help uh, them understand the Christmas season a little bit better, and probably the idea of forgiveness, if I have that right. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, we'll talk more with uh, Mike in just a moment. Mike Naraki of uh, Veggie Tales is uh, here with us. Phil Vischer, one of the other uh, co-creators, will be here in our 8 o'clock hour, and then we're going to put the two of them together, and uh, who knows what's going to happen in that half hour this morning. But I'm just wondering right now if it would be okay if, uh, if Larry spent a little uh, time with us. Would that be okay? Sure. Let me see if I can see where he is around okay. here. Okay. Where did you go? Larry, come over here, please. Hello! Oh, my goodness. Hey, Mark. How's it going? I, I'm doing well, but I'm kind of wondering, how old are you? Well, you know, um, I'm not sure. That's, that's the question. My doctor told me you'd have to count my rings. Yes. And that's a pretty invasive uh, procedure. Yeah, so, so you skipped out on yeah, that Yeah, I skipped part. out on that. Yeah, exactly. You ever get tired of being a cucumber? I mean, you look around, you know, you maybe wonder if Bob's got a better life than you do, you know? Well, I don't know. There's certain advantages of being a tomato, I suppose. But, you know, just the whole cool is a cucumber thing, you know, I've yeah. got that going for me. Yeah, and then you kind of have to learn to accept yourself, I guess, as you are, which is kind of a VeggieTales kind of a theme. I would yeah, think, yeah, but. absolutely. You know, so what if I don't have arms and legs? You know, I can bounce. Yeah, what were you like as a little cuke? As a little, as a little gherkin? Yeah, right. Well, oh, yeah, you know, I loved, uh, you know, loved uh, riding my bike. Um, which, which was unicycle. Yeah, of so, course um, it is. Yeah, yeah um, you know, I just loved, uh, you know, just, just kid stuff. You know, I, 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 you know, the Larry Boy superhero thing, you know, I kind of developed my love for superheroes, you know, as a child. And, yeah. You know, the, you know, got the whole suction cup thing going. Yeah, you know, who was your favorite kid. superhero then? My, my favorite superhero growing up? Um, well, you know, it's probably, you know, a, a toss up between Batman and Spider-Man. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I like them both which is what, what, what Larry Boy ended up. Yeah, are, are you and are you and Bob like are you really friends or is that just like something you put on for us on those veggie Oh no, things? we're best buddies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Bob and I are really good friends. Yeah. You know, we're complimentary. You know, I'm green, he's red. Yeah. Um, I'm tall and and thin, and you know, he's not. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Do you remind him of this? Just to keep the relationship going. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And so how about your uh, parents? I mean, did they ever expect you to go on to become so famous? They had no idea. You know, my brothers all work in uh, hardware. Uh-huh. Yeah, but they're very talented. They're good singers. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, there really wasn't a market for singing vegetables growing up, you know, for them. Mm -hmm. So mostly there's a market just for vegetables. Has anyone told you you're very good looking? Why, thank you. <laughs> Just wondering. For a cucumber, I guess, right? Right, yeah. And, and do you find it hard at various times of the year to go places when you're so well recognized by kids all over, not only this country, but probably many places in the world? Oh, well, I love, I love meeting kids, so it never bothers me to, to have the kids come up and say hi. Yeah. So I just love it. Yeah. Are you worried about getting old and being a wrinkled cuke? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, as long as I stay cool, you know, which yeah. is which is fun about coming to Chicago because yeah. I don't have to worry about you know getting all. And, and if I stay spritzed, you know, like every fifteen, or, yes, every yeah. every fifteen or twenty minutes, you know, yeah. that keeps me fresh. No, I, I don't think I know this. Are you married? Uh, no, no. You no, ever I'm thought not. about that? Uh, well, that you know, another... you know, you know, Petunia rhubarb. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm kind of sweet on Petunia, but okay. you know, we're just friends. Okay. So, but uh, you, in the garden, is that one of your favorite songs? Uh, you know, I maybe it is. Okay. So, uh, well, I want to thank you for coming by and spending some uh, time with us. It's always nice to meet a cuke. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me. Yeah, a cute uh, cuke uh, as well. All right. So, uh, so maybe we'll see Bob later on. Maybe, uh, maybe he can uh, give us some insight on, uh, on, on Larry's life also. Okay, so you're not tired of, uh, of being uh, <clears throat> a character in life, huh? Am I back to Mike now? Yeah, you're okay, back to okay. Mike now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure where to go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, you know, I've been doing Larry's voice now for, for so long that right. it's just such a, such a natural extension. Do you do <laughs> so. this when you're out in public? I mean, like you're in a seat, because I do those kind of voices, and uh -huh. I'm not a character on a cartoon thing, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, do you just do this by, you know, when you're out in public sometimes? Well, it's a thrill for me when people, you know, most of the time, you know, that's, that's the advantage of being a, a cartoon character voice, because right. most people don't recognize you out, right. in, out in public. But some people do, and I always have fun, you know, when, when people are, are fans and they come up and they ask me to do the voice, I just, I love doing the voice for them just to see the reaction um, because I know for myself when I've seen 
you know, other voice actors do their character voice. Right. It is just fascinating to see this voice that you associate with this cartoon character coming out of, you know, uh, you know, some guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, these yeah. are your DVDs are sold like in Walmart and Target and places like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if if I were a guy like you, I'd be going into those stores, looking at people, looking over this, and I'd stand right behind them, and go, "Oh, buy that one! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Isn't that great?" <laughs> I am guilty. I am guilty of like redoing facings. You know, I was actually my my wife and I were in a Cracker Barrel the other day, and in those little turnstiles. Yeah. You know, so I sort of turned it where the Veggie Tales was turned out. Yeah. Know? Good move. <laughs> so, yeah. I have one book out. But I did that in a couple of bookstores, too. <laughs> kind of put it on the top shelf. But, uh, right, right. All right. Well, uh, we're going to have you back with us, uh, I believe, next hour for a while, and we'll have some more fun with you. But thanks for uh, doing this and for coming up to Chicago just to be a part of this special event for us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks so much, Mark. Mike Naraki, again, one of the co-creators of Tales. <laughs> 